Verse number one. Verse number one. All right. All right. Are you there? Yes. All right. If you're there, say, mm hmm, aha. Mm hmm, aha. All right, all right, all right. So we're going to read. Are you, are you there? Yes. Please read together with me. One, two, go. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. All right. I want us to read together. One, two, go, please. 12, verse 1. 12, verse 1. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. All right. You know you are Gentiles carried away to these damn idols. That sound is very nice. It's very, very nice. However you are led. Then he says, verse number three, Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a cast, and no one says that Jesus is Lord as by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts by the same Spirit. There are diversities of ministries by the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another... To another, uh -huh. to another the of okay, to another, the interpretation of tongues, uh -huh. but, but one and the same spirit, distributing to each one individually as he wills. One more time, verse number 11. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each individual as he wills. One more time. One and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. Lift, us, lift up your hand and say with me, Father. I thank you because the gifts are active in my life. I thank you that I will walk in the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, gifts of faith, gifts of healings, working of miracles. Prophecies, designing of spirits, different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, as you will. I receive them, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Let me begin by appreciating every one of you. Thank you so much for coming to church. And thank you so much for making this church your local church. Your life will never be the same again, in Jesus' name. We are going to be having... Uh, 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 parking for cars very, very soon. Amen. Very, very soon. I see cars. I see a lot of cars coming Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise be to God. Did you enjoy the seven hours of prayer yesterday? Yes. How many of you received the instructions from the Lord? Wow, powerful. So it is making sense, a lot of sense. It is important to pray. Jesus speaking in Luke 18, he says, men ought to pray and not to lose heart. The antidote for losing heart is to pray. Praise Amen. be to God. Amen. If you can get time, I would highly recommend you go listen to a teaching I taught. I don't know which year, but I taught on a teaching on how to know you're under spiritual attack. I would really, really encourage you to go listen to that audio. If I can, uh, I will remember. I will repost it in the group. It's important so that you may be able to uh, get to know where we are in Jesus' name. And one of the things that you can tell that you're under spiritual attack is when your prayer life is under attack, is when you feel like you don't want to pray is when you feel like uh, uh, the things of God are no longer making sense. One of the other ways to know that you're under spiritual attack is when you lose passion for the things of God. All of a sudden, you don't want to listen to sermons, you don't want to uh, appear in the gathering of saints. That could be a sign that you're under spiritual attack. And another, uh, the third reason, I'm just giving you so that you can go and listen to it. The third reason that can tell you that you're under spiritual attack is when you begin to lose sensitive relationships mm -hmm. from mentors, from your pastors. What a sweet yeah. When you begin to see certain relationships that you used to hold sacred are now being attacked, you are under spiritual attack. Mm -hmm. And that's why Paul says we are not ignorant 
of the devil's devices. The advantage that the devil has over you is age. He was there during the time of Adam, time of Eve, praise be to God, time of Noah. He was there when the, the children of Israel were in bondage. So you can never beat the devil in the realm of the flesh. You can only beat him from the realm of the spirit. Amen. And I hear an amen. amen. So sometimes, even the things that happen in your life, before you react or overreact, check them in the place of prayer. One person said, never get into battles that you're not ready to uh, get spoils for, or battles that do not have spoils. Praise be to God. Amen. Tell yourself, I'm never ignorant. Never ignorant. Never ignorant. Never ignorant. So this week I was in a pastor's fellowship, praise be to God. And uh, I was just talking to some of the uh, gatekeepers, if I may call them, or senior men of God, bishops and archbishops, that have been laboring in this land in Kikuyu for a number of years. Some of them have been here for 40 years. Ask your neighbor, where were you 40 years ago? Some of them have labored for 40 years. Some of them have labored for 50 years. Praise be to God. One man of God was there. He has been preaching for 55 years, 55 years in Kikuyu. He was giving me the story of Kikuyu, and I was, I was mesmerized, telling me how this place was just a key forest, and so on and so forth. And, and, and we got to talking, and I began, because one of the things my pastor told, taught me personally is when you appear in the presence of greatness, you don't show yourself great. You sit down and you laugh. You sit down and you ask questions. You don't try to show the level of revelations that you have. And so I began talking to these guys. Forgive me for calling them guys, but anyway. I began to talk to these servants of God. And one of them began telling me that he has been doing a research for a number of months. And they have discovered this is research that has not been published. All right? Are you ready? This is research that has not been published, but it is authentic. That now, Kiambu County, and actually, Kikuyu town is living in LGBT. Kiambu County and Kikuyu town is actually living in LGBT. And he went ahead to tell me that now they are recruiting young children by those two shops you see near the schools. Mm -hmm. There are those two shops you see near schools. Yeah. They are now recruiting them there by finding out whether they have money or they don't have. And they, if they find out because, definitely because of the situation in the world, not this world, in the world, because of the hardships, basically every person is looking for money. So if they fraud the idea of money, it is easy to move children now from an early, uh, early age into that, so to speak, dogma. Praise be to God. That's what he asked me. So what, what, what would be the way out? And he told me the first thing is that the ministers that God is raising, the young ministers that God is raising, the people that are being raised in the marketplace, you should not be aloof. You should not turn a blind eye because these things are not coming into your house. He told me, if you don't do something in the place of prayer, you will do it when it's now bad. Praise be to God. What am I telling us, child, people of God? We have to engage the spirit of prayer. We have to be given to pray. Praise be to God. You have to soak yourself in prayer. And guess what? You have also to move in the gifts of the Spirit. Praise be to God. You have to. Read. This is not the age where you, you turn a look as to who is your children's best friends. You should know your children's best friends. You should know your husband's best friend. Oh, come on now. You should know your husband's best friend. Praise be to God. You should know your wife's best friend. And let me tell you, and I will keep on repeating over and over again, my wife is with their witness here. I hardly make friends. I am very careful. I learned it from my pastor. The, my pastor used to tell me, relationships are like elevator battles. They either take you up or take you down. If you look at your life where you are, you are a function of the influence of the people you hang around with. I'm very careful. You can hang with one person and you begin to doubt whether you're born again. One person. And that bishop told me something. He told me you should be very careful because there, there are so many, <laughs> he called them, there are so many online spiritual fathers. And that is where we are living. There are so many churches online. Oh, this one is saying this, this one is saying that, this one is saying this, this one is saying that. And he told me you should be very careful who you listen to. Because one doctrine 
can take a lifetime to remove from you. One. Praise be to God. You should be very careful. And let me tell you this. And I'm not trying to, to do what? To counter your free will. I'm just helping you. Can I help you, people of God? Yes, yes. The safest place to be is to listen to your local church's sermons. I listen to my pastor's sermon. I listen to my bishop's sermon. Bishop Alan Kiel, I listen to. You call my, my number right now, my personal number. He has a sister talk. Or who? Bishop Alan Kiel. If my spiritual father has it, I will put it there. There is a there is a there is a what? There is a safety in listening to sound teaching. Praise be to God. Amen. There is safety in listening to sound teaching. Somebody was telling me they had a sermon I preached about a, a year ago, and they were in that situation. They didn't know when I was preaching it one year ago, but now it was helping them that particular time. And they prayed, and they not told them go listen to this particular. Praise be to God. I want to do church the right way. Praise be to God. I don't want to be a statistic. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Amen. So, back to our text. That, I believe, is by the Spirit of God. Back to our text. Have you been learning something about Word of Wisdom? Did you learn something last Sunday? So, he tells us here, Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. So, don't be ignorant. Don't be misinformed. That's what the Amplified of the message says. Don't be misinformed about spiritual gifts. Then he tells them, you know that you are Gentiles carried away by these dumb idols. And I gave you a backdrop of the church in Corinth. The church in Corinth came from a pagan society. They were like devil worshippers. So basically, there were gifts, quote unquote, that were happening. There were certain manifestations that were happening. So he was telling them, don't be so ignorant of the fact that you used to do those things back then. Now when you're doing them here, you are doing them and whilst you're doing so, you're cursing Jesus. As you're seeing here, he says, Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a cast. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except the Holy Spirit. And let me just point something here that we are just about to discover. That the gifts of the Spirit magnify Christ. Amen. The gifts of the Spirit, write that down. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, they magnify Christ. They show us who Christ is. Praise be to God. So if you move in word of wisdom, word of knowledge, it should end up magnifying Christ. As you're going to look at the, uh, at the, at the, um, the combination of word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and prophecy, you will realize, even in the office of a prophet, even when the prophet will speak doom, he will still give them an alternative if you turn back. Praise be to God. So any gift of the Holy Spirit must exemplify and exalt Jesus. Praise be to God. And we should be very careful because even the other kingdom has hands. It has hands. That is why you need the gift of discerning of spirits. Praise be to God. Let's continue. He says... There are diversities of gifts. The word diversity basically means different. It just means different. All right? So the Apostle Paul here is saying there are different gifts but the same spirit. There are differences of administration but the same law. And differences of operation but it's the same God which worketh all in all. Praise be to God. Amen. So remember the categories of the gifts? What, what was the category? Remind me. Revelatory. What are the lists there? Word of wisdom. Word of knowledge. Designing of spirits. Then we have power gifts. Okay, let's whichever. Or let's join in the power gifts. Power gifts. What are under the power gifts? Working of miracles. Healings. 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 Uh -huh. Faith. And then we have. Actually, it's the gift of faith. It's the gift of faith. Uh -huh. Then we have utterances. That's where we have what? Prophecy. Interpretation of tongues. All right. So, write this down. These three categories of gifts, three of them say something. Write that down. Three of them say something. Three of them do something. Three of them reveal something. 
right? So three of them say something, three of them do something, three of them reveal something. Praise be to God. The three gifts that say something are the gifts of utterance. Even the Otazipata poor. They're the gift of utterance. They are prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. The three gifts that do something are the gifts of power. That's the gifts of faith, the working of miracles, and the gifts of healings. So they're gifts that do what? Do something. Say something. Rather, they say something. There are some, there are three that do something, and there are three that reveal something. All right? Is it making sense? The gifts that reveal something are the gifts of revelation. They are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Now, if you remember what I said for the guys that were here last Sunday, I demystified prophecy. You, know. you remember? And I said that inside the gift of prophecy, there is no word, prediction. And we saw in 1 Corinthians 4, 14 verse 3, that... Forget about it. Just can you hear me? Yes. We say that in the gifts of uh, for uh, uh, the gift of prophecy is for what? For exhortation, edification, and comfort. So when I'm preaching the word of God, I am edifying, I am exalting, and I am I'm comforting people. Praise be to God. So inside the gift of prophecy, there can be an overlay of word of wisdom. So as I'm preaching, I can move with word of wisdom. As I'm pro- uh, preaching, I can move in word of knowledge. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. And then we say word of wisdom is what? Can you define for me what is word of wisdom? Is the a fragment of the sovereign mind of God concerning his will, purpose, counsel, and all those things. About the future. Praise be to God. Amen. So if I say, for example, that I see in December you moving from one area to another area, we call that what? Word of wisdom. But guess what? I can be saying that whilst preaching. So write this down. Those gifts work together. The gifts of the Spirit work together. The gifts of the Holy Spirit work together. And when we get to the gift of prophecy, I will take a longer time there because I have to teach you also how to judge the prophetic. Because re- realize that we have the gift of prophecy and we have the office of a prophet. We need to understand those things. Praise be to God. All right. Can I continue? So notice also, these gifts are listed in the order of their importance. Of the three gifts of revelation, the word of wisdom is the best gift. Of the three gifts of power, the gift of faith is the best gift. Of the three gifts of utterance, the gift of prophecy is the best gift. Praise be to God. All right, so today we are going to look at what? The gift of word of knowledge. The gift of what? The gift of word of knowledge. Realize again, just like we said about word of wisdom, there is no gift of knowledge. There is no gift of knowledge. I'm correct, yeah. There is no gift of knowledge. There is the gift of a word of knowledge. Is it making sense? Yes. Just like there is no gift of wisdom, there is no gift of knowledge. There is the gift of the word of knowledge. All right? 1 Corinthians 12 verse 8 says, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. And then notice something that I needed to highlight. Can I highlight it for you? Yes. Where are you? Where are you? I saw you. All right. It says in verse 4 of 1 Corinthians 12, there are diversities of gifts by the same spirit. Are we talking about the Holy Spirit? Yes. And then he says there are diversities of ministries by the same Lord. Has that proven that the Holy Spirit is Lord? Has that proven that? And then he says, and there are activities of, uh, there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God. Is the Spirit of God God? Talk to me, people of God. Yes. Is He God? Yes. So is He in the Trinity? Yes. 
Good. So let's continue. So he says, for one is given to for to one to one is given the word of knowledge. That's First Corinthians twelve verse eight. And I've said there is no such thing as a gift of knowledge. There's no, it's just, there's no gift of knowledge. There is word of knowledge. So the word of knowledge is the supernatural revelation by the Holy Spirit of certain facts in the mind of God about the past and the present. So a man of God, whether you are an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, you know, the fivefold ministers. As they are ministering, they can begin to reveal to you things about your past. Na hapa ndiyo wase wengi wanasemaga, eh, Mr. Kikuka Mbele Church, nisimulikwe. But you realize, with the gifts of the Spirit, also comes maturity in how to use them. Praise be to God. Write that down. You need to be mature in how you're using the gifts of the Spirit. I was somewhere long time ago, about 10 years ago, and I remember one person using a gift. I believe that was the word of knowledge. And he was like, the woman you have married was never meant to be a wife. And they had been married for 15 years. You can break a home. You can break a home using easy gifts. You need to be mature. And I noticed, uh, my wife can tell you about, uh, about 15 years ago when Fem Nakuru now, began. They had their own place about 15 years ago. I remember Ken. Hey, this woman of God is powerful. I remember we'll go pray. Mr. Francis. And Evangelist Teresia will come to church. Get into the prayer uh, cent- uh, it's called a prayer center right now. And she'll stop and say, hey, I can smell the aroma of prayer. Hey! You, you are hearing my indichoma. Yeah, yeah, naskia aroma ya prayer. And she told us, you guys are going to move with the gifts of the spirit. Men, we were young. Tell your neighbor we were young. And naive. We were young and naive. So, we began using the gifts against one another. So, nakwambia ni saidiye, so, naniambia, unanakwambia, nasuko nangiri moja kwa mfuko. And then I realized, as we were using them, against what the Lord wanted them to be, they disappeared. They disappeared. We never saw them again. They just whistled away. And I remember the evangelist telling us, if you don't use them the correct way, they will fizzle out. But there is a church. There are believers that are going to use the gifts for the glory of God. Praise be to God. So, God is all knowledge. He knows everything. But he doesn't reveal everything he knows to man. He gives him just a word or a part of what he knows. Praise be to God. A word is a fragmentary part of a sentence. So a word of knowledge is simply a a fragmentation of a part of God's knowledge. Is he making sense? All right. So God, we have said, is all-knowing. He has all knowledge. He doesn't impart all knowledge to us. Just a part of what we need to know. Look at 1 Corinthians 2.10. You can write it down. 1 Corinthians 2.10. 1 Corinthians 2.10. What does the Bible say in 1 Corinthians 2.10? But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So who searches the deep things of God? The spirit of God. Praise be to God. So the spirit of God is all-knowing. But you are not all-knowing, even though you carry the spirit of God. Praise be to God. Do you know for a fact, if you knew everything, you will never practice faith? You will never practice faith. Praise be to God. If you knew tomorrow that you're going to get 100 million, there's a chance you'll not not even pray today. You'll be like, I'm anticipating. I'm waiting for the millions to come. Then he says in verse 11, For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. He says in verse 12, Now we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know, that we may know the things that have been freely given to us by God. The word know there is where we get the word aware. That we may be aware of the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, 
but which the Holy Spirit teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Verse 14 says what? But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually... So from this text, we get to understand that the Spirit of God searches the deep things of God. So if you are pursuing revelation, you want to be deeper, because some of us want to be deeper than Apostle Paul, then pursue the Spirit of God. Praise be to God. And by the way, let me help you. In your pursuit to, to find knowledge and revelation, watch out you don't fall. Paul says knowledge puffs up. Praise be to God. How deeper can you be? Deeper than Christ. You can't be deeper than Christ. Praise be to God. So notice also, this word of knowledge is a supernatural manifestation. As are all the gifts of the Spirit. None of them is a natural gift. If one of them is natural, then all of them are natural. If one of them is supernatural, all of them are? Praise be to God. So even when we look at the gifts of healing, we have advanced so much medically. There's medical advance, advancement more so in this century than in the other century. And we appreciate the fact that it is happening. Praise be to God. But this should not negate the place of healing. Jesus spoke and gave us a commandment. You should lay hands on the sick. Don't run away from the Talk to me. You don't run away from the sick. You lay hands on the sick. So what was happening during COVID? That's for another time. Praise be to God. So, lift your hand and say, Father, I will walk with these gifts. Praise be to God. Now, I want to show you some of the places and times in the Bible where this gift has been used. Can we go there? So, the gift was manifested through visions. How do I know that? Through visions. John, the writer of the book of Revelation, is in the Isle of Patmos. And actually they say the Isle of Patmos at his time was full of snakes. Alright? So he says that I was in the spirit in the day of the Lord. So how did he receive the book of Revelation? He was in the spirit in the day of the Lord. Praise be to God. And he begins to, uh, to get a vision from our Lord Jesus Christ concerning the seven churches. Do you remember the seven churches? Yes. Huh? Yes. Laodicea, Philadelphia. you remember those churches? <laughs> Now, were those churches going to come to pass or were they there? They were there. So whatever he was receiving was what? Word of knowledge. Praise be to God. So, although it, was, it, was, it, was, it is now a prophetic message for us, the seven churches, to him it was a word of knowledge when he was receiving them because those churches existed. Praise be to God. Another way we can see the word of wisdom through vision is through Acts. The story of, um, we read it last, last Sunday, Acts 9.10. The story of Ananias and Apostle Paul. You remember? Yeah. And I differentiated between word of wisdom and word of knowledge. You remember? Yeah. Or can I repeat it for the sake of the people who are not there? Yes. All right. So the Bible says then there was a certain disciple at Damascus named who? Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision. Ananias, he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street called Straight. What is that? Word of knowledge. Because there is a street already called? Straight. Arise, go to a street called, go, go to a city called Ondil. God is not creating Ondil. It is already there. That is word of knowledge. Praise be to God. Amen. And then he says what? And inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus. Was there somebody called Saul? Yes. And if you find many souls, he must be who? Saul of Tarsus. Tarsus. That is word of knowledge. Praise be to God. Yeah. For behold, he's doing what? Praise. He's praying. Notice all these things are happening in a vision. I pray God delivers you from Netflix visions. <laughs> and funny visions in Jesus' name. May your visions and your dreams be so spiritual that God is communicating something. In Jesus' name. And then he says what? 
and has seen in a vision an, a, a man named Ananias. Mbaka in the vision, he has seen the name of the person coming and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Iyo yote ni word of knowledge. Then from there, he tells the Lord, you know this man has persecuted us so much. And the Lord is like what? He's saying, that is my chosen vessel. I have called him. He will suffer many things for my sake. That is what? Word of wisdom. Talking about the future. Am I now making sense? Yes. Praise be to God. So if a prophet comes, because we will not be the only people ministering here. That's why I'm teaching you these things. So if a prophet comes here and he says, um, I see Ukambani. Is that prophecy? I'm assuming. I see Ukambani. He's from, he has never seen you. He's like, I see Ukambani. Don't be mesmerized. Is that prophecy? It is what? Yeah, there's a place called. So Ufai Kushtuka. You're getting. But here in his office, because you are not taught, you will think that's, prophet, that, that's the prophetic moving in. But as he's preaching, he's prophesying. See, I'm prophesying to you. To me, I'm prophesying. Edification, exaltation, and comfort. So when somebody is preaching here, they are actually prophesying. Is it making sense? Yes. Now you understand why Paul would say, Desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy, especially that you may edify, especially that you may comfort people, especially that you may exalt people. Praise be to God. So when he tells you, you're from Mukambani, many Kenyans are like, yeah, 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 yeah. I've been visited. So relax, relax. And, and let me help you. When you're getting any word from any minister of the Lord, don't close your eyes. Open your eyes. And listen, skiza. What a sweet son. What a sweet son. Because some, some, sometimes you're so emotional, you're not listening. I don't know how to listen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen. Praise be to God. Listen. And let me help you, even as we're going to be looking at prophecy in the office of a prophet, there will be times also you can be given a word that doesn't resonate with your spirit man. Because this man is speaking way ahead. And God has not taken you there spiritually. Praise be to God. Amen. So don't, that's why Paul will say, Mr. Francis, don't despise prophesying mm -hmm. in First Thessalonians. We're going to look at those things in Jesus' name. All right? So Ananias was not an apostle, as was John. He wasn't a pastor or an evangelist. Ananias wasn't even listed as being a teacher. But he had grown. Praise be to God. Amen. Are you learning something? Yes. He was just a member of the church in Damascus. And if the Lord wills, laymen and ministers can have a manifestation of the word of knowledge. And let me also help you. If God moves in word of wisdom today, don't box him in the afternoon to move in word of wisdom. <laughs> in the evening and as a moon, he lives. Remember as he wills. So he can decide today is a prophetic Sunday. He can decide next Sunday is just utterances. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Which other way do we see visions happening also? Acts 10. Acts 10. Verse number 9. I'm going to read for you. Acts 10, verse number 9. It's the story of Peter. So Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Acts 10, verse number 9. And he, was, he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And so heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and falls of the air. And there came a voice to him, saying, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. I am mesmerized by this man of God. That even in the vision, they could tell him, Sauti Amungu. No, Lord. They could decipher the voice of God. Mungu atusaidie. Isi ndotozetu. Mungu atusaidie sana. 
Go on as you son. Then he said what? And the voice spoke again the second time. What God has cleansed, you should not call common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision, which has, had, has seen, should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon was surnamed Peter or lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men, whom say a vision. A vision. And of Kiri's story, I love Holy Ghost. Man, I want such a relationship. Kukoko vision, a battle, Holy Ghost, and there's a interrupt to onge. Look at what the Spirit of God says. There are three men that seek you. That is word of knowledge. It was not a revelation until they will come. They were already there. Praise be to God. Isn't it amazing? Holy Ghost, ah, today, wake up very early and close the doors. For two men will be coming through the windows. That is nice. That is nice, oh. Praise be to God. Do you know, people of God, can I help you, people of God? Do you know in our kingdom, we should never be surprised. From the agenda of God, he has created in a such a way, you should never be surprised. You should never be surprised that they were trying to fire you. You should have known. Is it making sense? Yes. If my boyfriend in a sermon, yes, we call like your kid. One of you is going to betray me. He knows. He knows. One of you is going to betray me. So even in betrayal, we should not be surprised. Praise be to God. He says what? Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing. Remember he was doubting. Now the Spirit tells him, Doubting nothing, for I have sent them. You see the word of knowledge at work? Yeah. Are you seeing it at work? Yeah. Praise be to God. Yeah. So, Apostle Peter shows us you can receive word of knowledge via what? Via what? All right, speak in tongues for a minute. Just pray in the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Again, let me show you another example of word of wisdom being manifested, but not in a vision right now. If you go to John 4, go to John 4. You know it. It's a story between Jesus and who? The Samaritan woman. All right? So Jesus now speaks to the Samaritan woman, tells her, if you knew who I, who I was and you would, if you know who I am, who is thirsty? You'll be giving. I would have. I would have given you what I'm trying to paraphrase. I would have given you water, living waters, Sindio. And she's like, uh, Jesus is like the water I give you is what? It will come from the springboard of life to everlasting life. And then Jesus now points this woman to salvation this way. You have five husbands. Jolimwambia, go call your husband. She's like, I'm paraphrase. I'm Jafika. You have, Jesus said, You have, you have well said, I have no husband. Uh -huh. You have had five husbands. Okay, pause. You have had? Was it a revelation? No. So she had five husbands. So Jesus breaks into the spirit man of this woman via the gift of knowledge. So let me retract and say, God can have you use the word of knowledge. You are part of salvation. Because after this, the woman went saying what? Come see a man. That is salvation. Praise be to God. So write this down. If I'm going to use the gifts of the spirit, if I'm going to use the gifts of the spirit, the primary reason is to win souls. If you're 
Mind and heart is about winning souls. The gifts will work. Praise be to God. The gifts will work. So, Jesus using the word of knowledge via inward witness wins a woman into salvation. Praise be to God. Amen. Are you learning something? Yes. Now, let me differentiate something here. Some people will say, oh, I will pray and ask God for word of wisdom. Yes, for word of wisdom so that I can know the Bible. As in Tatonia gift you a word of wisdom, word of knowledge rather, with your Bible. Sinukwele. Sinukwele. Then don't you think that will negate the scripture in second in is it second Timothy 2.15 that says, study to show yourself approved as unto the Lord, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So there is a difference between word of knowledge and the knowledge you have that you get as you study the Bible. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise be to God. Kumbuka hivi, wacha ni wacha ni slow down. Hata sima inisaidia. Niko nasikia nikinyoma sasa. Wacha ni slow down. Easy gifts zinakuja ku complement your study of the Bible. Easy gifts asijakuja uache kusoma Bible. Bwana siwe sana. Don't be a prophet that doesn't have the word. Don't be a, a healing minister that doesn't have the word of God. Praise be to God. And I will tell you something the evangelist told us 15 years ago. I remember it clearly. He said, when the spirit of God is not moving in gifts, move with the Bible. Uh, move with the word of God. Praise be to God. Because tunaza, tunaza kuwa na kanisa, muna penda tu gifts. Mchungaja kibuja hapa na kuna prophet. Nisiku siku siya prophet siya. No, 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 no. Ah, can I help you again? Yes. Can I help you again? Yes. Do you know sometimes word of wisdom, word of knowledge, ziki kongana na the prophetic office. Sometimes, Ken, when you are given a word of knowledge, rather word of wisdom, it's because you are doubting. So God has to use a gift so that you stop doubting. We're going to see these things. Can I hear an amen? So, if you look at the story of 1 Samuel 3, you know it. 1 Samuel 3, verse number 4. is the story of Samuel and Eli. Samuel was in the temple helping the prophet Eli. One night, Samuel heard a voice calling him. Thinking it was Eli, he got up and went to him. Eli told him, I have not called you. So Samuel went back. Again, he heard the voice. Samuel, Samuel. He ran to Eli. Again, Eli sends him back to bed. When this happened the third time, Eli realized that God must be talking to the boy. And Eli told Samuel to answer the next time the voice called him. It has always, look at me, people of God. It has always amazed me that even though Eli was a fallen priest, he knew how to hear God. And even though Samuel was the choice man next to come into the priesthood, he didn't know how to hear God. So, Mr. and Mrs. Francis and the rest of us, there is something that you will never know until you are taught. Is he making sense? Yes. Until I teach you how to pray, chances are you don't know how to pray. Until I teach you the gifts of the Spirit, you will never know them. How many of you now are understanding these gifts better? You're getting my point. And let me tell you, just because a priest is fallen in your eyes, doesn't mean God cannot use them. Oh, 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 oh. That is why if I were you, I would stop pointing fingers on men of God. What are you do you know that's how we judge people? I tell you when somebody says, God forgive me, God left. You are the one there. Praise be to God. Amen. Just because you see this man of God, they are doing, they are doing, they are doing. Let me tell you, there is no office 
There is only fivefold ministers. There is no sixth minister who is called to correct the body of Christ. <laughs> Praise be to God. There is no ministry. I have been called to correct the body of Christ. You have not been called. One and secret son. And here we see that Eli in his fallen state knew the voice of God. Samuel in his rightful state did not know the voice of God. That is why men need training. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. So if Eli never spoke, a word of wisdom in word of knowledge in Anita. Is he making sense? Can I give you a story? All right, you don't want a story. Can I read a story for you? Yes. A spirit-filled Baptist brother who is the president of his local chapter of the Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship once told me of an experience he had. He said, I passed by a large Roman Catholic church and something seemed to tell me stop. Are you getting the picture? Yes. Catholic church. Because God is not a respecter of any denomination. So I pulled into the car parking lot, stopped, and sat there praying for a little while. Something seemed to tell me that the priest would be praying in his office and that I should go in and lay hands on him and he would be filled with the Holy Spirit. I hesitated. I didn't want to make a fool of myself. I sat there and prayed a while longer. <coughs> then I decided it wouldn't hurt just to go see if I could find the priest and see if God was really leading me. This business executive found his way inside the church, knocked on the door of the priest's study. He heard a voice inviting him to come in. He opened the door to see a priest sitting at a desk with some books open in front of him. He entered, the priest got up and greeted him, and they introduced each other. When the priest heard that, this, that, uh, that, that his scholar was the president of the local full gospel chapter, he immediately said, praise the Lord. I was just reading about what God is doing in these days in the move of the Spirit. I was reading about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. And the Lord witnessed to me that this is what I need. I am conscious of my spiritual lack. Only 10 minutes ago, I bowed my head and said, Lord, I don't, want, I don't know anyone in this town who has had this experience. Send somebody by to pray for me. And here you are. The business executive told me that priest got down on his knees. I laid hands on him and he started speaking in tongues almost instantly, lifting up both hands to heaven. So the man of God needed a miracle. And God needed somebody who will get a word of knowledge and run with it. So if it was in our context, you receive a word of knowledge, would you go to a Catholic church? It's not what I'm asking you. Will you go? Or will you say, ah, no, 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 no. I won't go. May God help us in Jesus' name. Praise be to God. So are there supernatural manifestations of the gift of word of knowledge in the Old Testament? I am glad you asked. Write this down. Of all the nine gifts, the only gift that is never seen in the Old Testament is tongues and interpretation. Of all the nine gifts, the only gift that is never seen huh, in the Old Testament is what? Tongues and interpretation. Pastor, why tongues and interpretation? I'm glad you asked. Because tongues and interpretation, they begin their genesis in the book of Acts. So before the book of Acts, tongues and interpretation were never there. Am I making sense? Is it making sense? All right. So... I want to show you examples of the gift of word of knowledge in the Old Testament. Are you ready? Yes. First Kings 19. First Kings 19. So this is word of knowledge used to enlighten a discouraged servant. First Kings 19. The Bible says then Jezebel. Hey, I pray you never call any of your daughters Jezebel. <laughs> Do you know Jezebel? Hey, that word is very funny because I remember there's a there's a program on what? Is it called Jorowa Uba? She has a mother in law called Jezebel. And she does she does she does the unthinkable for Jorowa Uba. This name, this name, 
please don't allow yourself to be called who? Ati Baba Jezebel, come here. May God help us. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. You remember the story behind, uh, uh, just before this story? Ilikuwa, alikuwa me pata victory, slaughtered the prophets of Baal. If you are for God, cap and he. If you are for the devil, cap and he. And then I'm a shepherd, talk from that victory. And then he told what? Tomorrow at this time, I'm coming for your head. There's a principle there I want you to learn. Can I teach you that principle as I digress? There's a principle I want you to learn here. That most of the time, you can, be, you can get so discouraged after a major victory. You should learn that I can be discouraged after a major victory. I can be attacked at a major victory. Because this man has just slaughtered prophets. Who is Jezebel? Okay? And then verse 3 in Asema. And when he, Elijah, saw that he rose and went for his, he went away, he ran. He ran for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a, da- a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself. And he requested. Oh, sorry. And he requested. Let me read for you. Um, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. And came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might. Imagine from Harper. You are. If you are for the kingdom, stay here. If you are not for the kingdom, stay here. Bring the sword. He repairs the altar. He does everything. He restores the presence of God. But now, a couple of sentences later, he is doing seven hours of prayer. And his major item is what? Father, kill me. Kill me. May I die. May I die by fire. May I die by earthquakes. Oh, rain, uh, brimstone. That is what he's praying. And he prayed that he might die. And say, it is are you seeing after a major breakthrough, you can pray to die. They can, you can be attacked to think you should die. After a major breakthrough, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my. Oh, when you are I have the life of God in me. So he's saying, take your life back. Take it. And I can imagine he's saying, take it while speaking in tongues. <laughs> can you imagine that? Me, I'm so glad. For I am no better than my. Let's continue. Jump to. Mm-hmm. Let me show you. Let me show you. Jump to 14. Jump to 14. What does he say in 14? I have been for the Lord of hosts because of the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, I am left. And they seek my life to take it away. So he said, I am the only prophet. Look at the word of knowledge that God gives this man from verse 18. Verse 18 in the same way. Yet I have left 7,000 in Israel to bar and every mouth that is a word of knowledge. Were there existing 7,000 prophets? Yes. They were there. Let me show you another principle. Mumelan principle ya kwanza ya kwamba uneza kuwa you can actually be discouraged after a major breakthrough. You have learned that. Yes. Let me show you another principle that you can learn from that place. Never think you are the only person. Never think you are the only person. In fact, from that text, Mr. Francis, and I'm gathering that the population was not as much as it is today. We can correctly say, we can correctly say that for every one of you, there are 7,000 ready to replace you. And for every one of you and me, Kulingana na your text, there are 7,000 ready to replace you. So it's a privilege. It is a privilege. He thought he was himself. I am the only person. 
I'm the only prophet. So basically, let me ask you, people of God, if Elijah never kills the prophets of Baal, will they have arose another person to kill the prophets of Baal? Yes. For we unafa we endo buy t-shirt to print. For every one of me, there are seven more, seven thousand more. It is a privilege when God calls you to do something. It's a privilege. Wako ni masab. Wanangoja wafanyo hivi. Okay, I'm not a fan of football. And don't know that I'm a support team gani. But kwa siku na nona kwa wafanyo chikari. Alafu msela kama. Itarama niyana mwenye anjia chikari. So imagine every single day of your life. Kuna kuwa gani. Angels. Wanangoja saab. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. I will tell you something we, me and my wife know. Babes, you know me and my wife know we were not the original people coming here. We are replacements for someone. Praise be to God. Amen. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. Man, it's a privilege to be a speaker. Because if you be a speaker, you know, in a seventh hour, what a good is ever for each. It's a privilege. Praise be to God. Amen. And let me tell you, one of these findings, to the Sumama Mbelea God, Unokoka, tick. Unisa, hako njisa kizungu itakuwa mkuti, na kiswaili itakuwa mufti. Praise be to God. So, by word of knowledge, God revealed there were seven more prophets that had not bowed down to Baal, nor even kissed the mouth. So, Aka Elijah, people of God, Elijah Ali Dehi Vila Kuwaona. He never saw the seven. He never saw them. The Bible doesn't tell us he saw them. But we can think and say, maybe one of them is the son called Elijah. So there were 6,999 other prophets that he never saw. It's a privilege. And I am very sure that's the reason why we have a big population. Do you to see why old God runs off? So mungu kikombia na China ukapritu katae, atatuma mtu China. Agenda yake itafanyika. Who will do better? Na wacha ni wambi, hui, ebu ni yanga, damo da ida, ebu ni yanga dieni. Your replacement is very good. And is always better. A replacement who can replace me, and I pray he never does. We'll preach better. We'll talk better. We'll do ministry better. So every day I count it a privilege to serve God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So what first example is to uh, to show to encourage a discouraged servant. All right. Another example of word of knowledge used in the Old Testament to expose a hypocrite. To expose what? A hypocrite. Can we read? Uh, I would re- uh, can we see it in the projected copies there? Second Kings five twenty five. What are some? Second Kings five twenty five. Oh Lord, help us in Jesus' name. All right. So, can we go back? Can we go back to twenty? Do to part thoughts? Are you learning something? Yes. All right. Verse twenty. But. Okay, verse 19, verse 19, All right, let me give you a story. It's about Elijah, Elijah is it? Elisha and Naaman. All right? So the story says, then he said to him, go in peace. So he departed from him a short distance. All right? So, but Gehazi. Tell your neighbor, but Gehazi. So, Elisha is a pastor. Context. Elisha is the pastor. Gehazi is who? The PA. We may your story. I think the short pastor. <laughs> no, let's, let's, let's just call him the pastor and assistant for this, uh, for this context. Or the associate. All right? But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Look, my master has spared Naaman, this Syrian, while not receiving from his hand what he brought. Principle here. Unanalyze principle. Unanalyze principle, not any word of knowledge. Principle here. 
si kila kitu unapenda kushikwa Learn that si kila kitu ninapewa ndachukua. Mbona sio sana? There are things utachukua andapo ndio life yako inaanza kuchapa. Praise be to God. Mm-hmm. He says here, look my my master has spared now in this area while not receiving from his hand what he brought. But as the Lord lives, baka una anaingiza spirituality. But as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. Elisha had done a miracle. Sikuwe. Na kamwambia ende ndio kumwambia ende aoge, akufu dede. Si ndio? Hapo hapo kamwambia mimi sitaki gift yote. Wewe enda. So pia kwa zile za basi huyu juu ile tuko njaa bwana. Alafu naambia tu msee ende. Kwa hiyo generation ya three time. Wewe acha bwana. Ah, God ameniambia nikimbi. Mhm. So Gehazi does what? Pursued Nama. When Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him and said what? And he said, All is well. My master has sent me say. Did Elijah do that? No. Pasia ni niambia ni kuambia. Pasia ni niambia ni kuambia. I am telling you things I have seen as a pastor. There are people who use my name. Mm, I know what I'm telling you. Let's continue. Indeed, just now, two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the mount of Ephraim. What is it? It's a lion. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments. 23. So Naaman said, Take two talents. Usichukua hata hiyo moja unataka. Chukua mbili. Basi si ndio wamekutuma. Basi alikutuma. Eh, chukua mbili. And he asked him and bound two talents of silver in two bags and two changes of garments and handed them to two of his servants and they carried them ahead of him. Sasa so, unacheki ujanja, amedanganyana. Amepewa vitu zenye baba yake alikataa. Alafu anawaambia endeni mbele ndio wakikutana isikuwe ni zangu tuendelee mhm 23 24 when he came to the citadel he took them from their hands so hawajapatana na basi amechukua ameziweka kwa store in the house then he let the men go ishini ishini hata si angewape kitu this thing eh? let's continue now he went in and stood before his master Elijah said to him Giazi ulienda wapi? And he said, your servant did not go because he has to support a lie with another lie. Uh-huh. Then he said to him, did not my Another trans Ooh, no, Another translation says did not my spirit go with you. Hmm. Ready for another principle? Ready for another principle? Yes. Are you ready for another principle? Yes. If truly me and my wife are your pastors, everywhere you go, my spirit goes with you. Huh? And that is why if you go to a funny place and they see you in JCC, they will be like, ah, even the pastor of JCC is like that. Because you can't separate JCC from you. Ni kama mse mwenye amechoro job na Coca-Cola. Sio akienda na t-shirt ya Coca-Cola kwa Pepsi. They are from the same family but it's a conflict of interest. Are you getting my point? He says here, he says here. He says, "Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you?" Listen, listen, listen. Are you please look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I used to hear my spiritual father say, "I can tell you when a member of the church or a son in the house has disconnected from me. I was like, damn, that's so bad. How can you tell somebody has disconnected from me? He will tell me, I can tell. I don't even need to get near them. I can pick in my spirit. Their heart is not with me. That for me was theory. I am seeing it as practical. I can tell. 
and a member's heart is not with me. I can tell. I don't even need to speak in tongues. I tell it. And I usually tell my wife, she's here. I tell my wife, babes, that person's heart is not with me. And a few times later, I see the product. And let me tell you, people of God, can I help you? Let me tell you, people of God, if your heart is not with your pastor, I'm going to tell you, 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 I'm going Kusha notice ya kwamba wakati all the disciples were near Jesus wakati wa meetings Judas alikuwa na pigaa biashara ndio alitumika ama mtaji juliza hizo swali every time Jesus is calling he saying come be with me Judas is never there hapo na chief priest na yeye ndio alitumika kusaliti Yesu so niwaulize kama Judas angekuwa na kaa hapa na Peter kwa anatoka will Peter be the Judas yes Praise be to God. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Let me help you and deliver you. If your heart lives, if you no longer esteem your person, I tell you, look for another church. Because even this car is more productive than you. I tell you the truth. The reason why I'm passionate in telling you these things, I saw and I heard my pastor say, and it's going to come very soon. It's going to come very soon. I heard him say, and he will tell me some things you will not learn until you go to your station. Man, every week I tell my wife, I nimelewa that. Nimelewa pasi. Yani tulimsumbua hivi. Let me tell you. If your heart is not, even for this local church, please, usijisumbue. Mwona siku ya sabi. Praise be to God. Unona hii church vile hiko hivi? Ni mungu wa metupatia. Roho yako ikio kwa hii church, Hakuna mtu atakuombea inuwe ispika. Mungu, kwa sababu unapenda God, mta inuwe ispika. Siju ya pasi. Wana sifuwe sana. Si kwenye utona ispika ni ya pasi. Mili kwa na ispika zangu huo. Kwa hongeka. Hizo mina bebaga. Hii, hizi vitu. Si kwenye roho yako itatoka from service. You are done. I show you another principle. Or like the Nigerians will say, I show you another mystery. Let me show you here. Let's go back there. Did not my heart, okay, yes, thank you. To some pamoja, did not my heart, to me, and I was scared, scared, so what do Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? What an explain me, 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 let me tell you. Can you explain? An example. Elijah, Elisha, sorry. Forgive me for calling this one. This one. Forever. Ukisoma Old Testament yako, inasema vizuri. Apart, can't remember it, but inasema hivi. They were trying to get a word from the prophet. And they said, there is a prophet here who is called Elisha. Who used to do what? Pour water. So we do your text. We don't have to any your text. Who used to pour water on the hands of Elijah? Elijah. So Elisha was a trainee under Elijah. Is it making sense? So how did the anointing come by serving the man of God? Is it making sense? Now we know for a fact that Elijah battled anger. Alikuwa mse wako fiatuka. Kwa hivyo akiraise Elisha, alikuwa na mfiatukia. Vibaya sana. Na tukiangalia yu kitu iliingia. Kwa sababu Elisha alita? Bears. Bears. <laughs> na zilikuja zikararua mse. But that's a story for another day. So, how did he get the anointing? By serving. How did he get the anointing? By serving. You may not be called to preach here. But you have been called to go somewhere else. As you serve, there is an anointing that grabs over you. Kuna ile anointing ulipata wakati nisema bwana Yesu unaja kwako. Kuna anointing ya office. Hizi ni vitu nafaa kuanza kuwafunza. Sasa mko, mko mature enough you can get these things. Kuna anointing ya kufanya kazi ya God. Na kuna anointing ya office ya kazi yenye unafanya. Kama sasa I have, I'm, I'm anointed as a believer. I'm anointed 
to do my work and I'm anointed as a pastor in the office of a pastor. Three anointings. Can I hear an amen? When you get born again, the first anointing is the one that works. The one that you are born again. One of the The anointing for your office and the anointing for what you do comes as you serve. I was not a prophet, Amos 7. I was not a prophet. Neither was I a son of a prophet. But as I was standing sheep, the Lord took me. Write this down. It is dangerous to have a pastor who doesn't have a pastor. It is dangerous to have a pastor that doesn't have a pastor. Who will correct my head? But I have a pastor. When you my wife, I have a pastor. 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 I Aliniyonesha ni achane na pesa. Ni achane na kama. Because when it comes to mentorship, you don't do what you want to do. You do what you are told to do. Iyo ndiyo shida ya ii kizazi. Unataka kukapale ju, lakini utaki kutraini ukaya pale ju. But when you say, train up a child, a child, it can be a spiritual child or a physical child. Train up a child in the way they should go. So there must be a trainer. See you quickly. But this generation, they want the trainer to be the student. It can't work. So he tells him, wait, wait. Don't you know as I'm training you, a day will come you receive money. Money is not for now. If these things you get them for now, your destiny may be. Now we so many story. Uskige has it enough. You don't hear about Gehazi again. The ministry ended there. Praise be to God. Amen. So in my training as a pastor, I never, she's here, I never accepted any preaching engagement anywhere. Never. Nilikuwa na leto engagement hivi na zipeleka kwa ofisi. I am a student. I have not been commissioned. Unenda kupreach kwenye ujakuwa commissioned aji. Even to the Jingiza for Mangori, Unatandipo left, right, and center. See, you people are going to say, if you're faithful in another man, God will do what? So, after faithfulness, when you're given your own, even the devil knows you can't touch this. So, I'll be given, I was an assistant pastor, given opportunities. They choose, they will say, so and so, please go preach. They were working on my heart. Watch a year and I told me. What to me in this woman baka upasi. Even if you call me Bob, it doesn't move me. The day my pastor said, uh, here is Pastor Bob. I saw people clapping on my coffee. Because in your nation, you become a servant. Help us, Jesus, to become servants. Praise be to God. So Elijah was telling this man, there are things you will get at the end of your training. Watch a kukimbi ambele. Let me train you. Because he natuonesha gehazi alikuwa na penda, alikuwa na an battle for virtuousness. And God knew as long as you like material stuff, you cannot be the next generation of prophets. That is why the prophetic ended there. Praise be to God. Let me tell you, if you're in any field that God has called you, get a mentor. Get a mentor. Number two, don't argue with the mentor. Do what you're told. Even in the corporate world, you know me, I'm, I'm surprised that people in corporate who are believers, they can heave. Yes, yes. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'm not giving any Uber, ni, 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 ni chopper, I'm a ni chariot. 
itanipeleka huko imagine praise be to god he tells us here thank you he tells us it's not time to receive money clothing olive groves vineyards sheep is in indoors in your way 20 verse 27 therefore the leprosy shall cling to you and your descendants forever and he went out from his presence and that is why any person that God is calling into the full-time ministry, into the fivefold ministry, watch your mouth. We keep repeating and telling our, ourselves, me and my wife, we shall guard our mouth. After I am trying myself not to speak. Because, you see, from these words, the leprosy came up on Gehazi. Now to say Gehazi May God help us, people of God. Have you learned something? Yes. All right. Number three, and then I draw to a close. Word of knowledge given to warn a king of the enemy's plan. You can see it in 2 Kings 6. 2 Kings 6. 2 Kings 6. What does the Bible say? And the son of the prophet said to Elisha, See, now the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. All right? Please let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there and let us make there a place where we shall dwell. So he answered, go. Then one said, please, consent to go with your servants. And he answered, I will. All right, verse number four. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down. Mm -hmm. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water and he cried, Oh, master, for it was borrowed. Mm -hmm. So the man of God said, where did it fall? And he showed him the place. So he cut off a stick and threw it in there. And let if we do this, what one is a token view, Zana? But again, let's see another principle here by word of knowledge. He said what? In verse number, yes, thank you. So the man of God said, where did it now, we are going to pose a question. You used to be very, very good in the things of God. What happened? Where did you fall? Where did you fall? Where did you fall? You used to be given to prayer. You used to be given to service. Where did you fall? And he said, he showed him the place. Because you need to know where it fell and the place. Again, I've told you, and I, I don't know why I'm saying this, but again, I would say, I am very careful in making friends, especially in these days. My wife will tell you, my wife makes friends easy. She was asking me the other day, who is your best friend? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I don't know, because I, I think I have been trained to be very careful in making friends. Praise be to God. So, where did it fall? He said, he showed him the place, took a stick, threw it in, and it flowed in word of knowledge. People of God. Can I hear an amen? as if we are Number four, word of, word of knowledge used to help recover lost property. This one is a long one, but you can go and read First Samuel 9. But I can give you the story. It's about the donkeys that were lost. You remember? The soul story, the donkeys are lost. One of our ended a prophet, prophet account is that were recovered. That was word of knowledge. You can go read first Samuel 9 all the way to 20 in Jesus' name. All right. Word of knowledge used to discover a man in hiding. A man in hiding. That is first Samuel 10, 21. First Samuel 10, 21. First Samuel 10, 21. First Samuel 10, 21. So may God help you guys. And let me tell you, all of you, you need a man that will mentor you. You need somebody. Don't be an island. You remember the story of Jesus and the person with the, uh, the study of the waters? He will say what? This, the waters are being sad, but I never find a man who can put me in. You need a man. And these men that God will connect you with, they are not perfect. 
And let me tell you this, I say this by the Spirit of God, I say this, please write it in capital letters. One of the greatest, uh, one of the greatest tests that a church will ever go through is concerning them and their pastors. That relationship will be super tested. May you maintain your innocence when it comes to your pastors. May you maintain your innocence. David says something that has always kept me sober. He says in Psalm that neither do I consider myself or think of myself with things that are too high for me. There are discussions scale that are too high for me. Praise be to God. Boss, what are any apples of James wachana <laughs> Wachana na eh? Kuna vitu, kuna vitu, kuna jiletea juu ya kufungua mudomo ya hako. Buwana sifuwe sana. Buwana sifuwe sana. Wee sikuwa na mzazi. Biological mzazi. Sia mekupia tuwa maramigi. Unaenda ukisema vile ene mbae. Umelani kufunga mudomo. Tasa lani kufunga mudomo ya wachungaji. Buwana sifuwe sana. It will amaze you. I have seen it with my own eyes. You can talk about a pastor. And... God allows a need to come that that pastor is the only person that can sort it out. Na uta, itakuwa mbaya ukibeba kiburi yako na ugonjwa. Ukienda kuombea na Apostle James Manana akikuambia hey, matuta ni ya nini hapa? Matuta ni ya nini? <laughs> See I told you here never say never. Never beat your, your heart and say ah hii hezi ifanyika kwangu. Boss nitakuona kwa sasa TV. Ukizunguka hivi Praise be to God. Never open your mouth to talk about Catholic priests. You never call them. The last time I checked, Paul told, tell, tell us, run your own race. Boss, hey, run your own race. Nani wa qualify na scriptures. Moses and Aoa, a lady that is not a Hebrew, is an Ethiopian. Moses aliona kadem. Kamu Africa, kakam chizisha. Brother yake na sister. Brother yake ni priest. Sister yake ni prophet. Wameenda kwa kambi hapo anasema, hey, Moses anakuwa mchapa. Wewe unaona hiyo? Moses anaacha kusubiri anaenda Afrika. Watu wanakaa ndoro. Matope anaacha kamzungu hapa. Soma Biblia yako. Bible inasema God alika. <laughs> God alika. Akasema nini? Hawa wase wawili kwa hiyo kambi waitwe. Imagine God akisema nini? Kama teacher wangu wa chemistry, alikuwa anajichota vile anajua kizungu. Alikuwa anatoka U3 ball kambi. Ya ana crazy chemistry. U3 ball. And he was a, he was a pastor. He will teach us binomial nomenclature. Alafu anasema in the beginning God anashtuka haya. God says, Miriam Moses and Aaron come out of the camp. What did God say? When I want to speak to the children of Israel, I come like a cloud. When I want to speak to Moses, I come to him face to face. Niaji hamuku kuwa na uoka to speak against my servant Moses. Was it true? Yes! But speaking about it was wrong. Miriam aliamboje, wewe na hiyo prophetess yako? ukae nje ya kambi na udungwe nini leprosy moses interceded god akasema nini akae huko so unaweza ongea kuhusu mchungaji mchungaji akutetee mungu aseme ka huko i repent every, every single day if i have ever spoken about a man of god i repent every day bwana asifiwe sana 
Praise be to God. May God help us. May God help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God help us in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray?